Welcome to Season 2 of Voices of Value, a conversation between Peter Kakos and Rick Rushton and their high-achieving guests from professional sport, Olympians, business leaders and ordinary people with value hacks to share through simple life lessons. If you're keen to reach your next level personally and professionally, sit back and join the conversation with your hosts, Rick and Peter. Welcome to another episode of Voices of Value. This is Peter Kakos here with my good friend Rick Rushton. And Rick, it's uh, it's great to be back and uh, in these COVID-19 times. Um, there's some crazy things happening in the world, but with all this craziness, there's some amazing things that have has been going on. And I think um, when we um, when we look at the guests we have today for our listeners... Um, and viewers. And viewers. And viewers as well, yeah. It's fair to say... It's pretty special. It is special, mate. And uh, hello to everyone. I know we've had a little bit of a hiatus since Lee Thomas Brown all the way from North Carolina uh, last episode, but we really want to make sure that we weren't just filling a, an episode for the sake of filling an episode. We want to bring a real value-added one with us. And um, this sort of start off with uh, a very quick shout-out to our good friends who we're about to interview now. And um, one of this collaboration said, yeah, we'll just do an audio podcast, no problems. Well, the other part of that equation, Pete says, hang on, let's see, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. So we're going to do the full production and video and the whole thing and jump on YouTube and make sure we're doing it correct. So it's with great joy that we get to introduce to our listening audience, the Highland Street Country Club, which is a band that is virtual at the moment. If they're not number one on YouTube as the best tribute band in the world at the moment, I don't know who is. They are absolutely amazing at taking old standard classic songs and putting a modern take on them and really make them applicable to 2020 and beyond and I first got to engage with these two talented individuals about a year ago Pete and I've just every Friday afternoon at 4.30 um, they actually launch up a, a song from Go To Woe recorded in Darren's studios, the Adelaide Recording Studio, and uh, the two gentlemen we're about to introduce are going to tell us this story that started from a few friends gathering on a Friday night to have a bit of a sing-song into an absolute YouTube sensation with now more than 13 million, I think, was the views, but I'm hearing there's an update even as we speak, which I'm sure we're going to get. So on behalf of all of our listening audience, it's a very special welcome to the founders of the Hindley Street Country Club, Darren Mullins and Constantine Dello. Boys, thank you for joining us on Voices of Value. Hey, Rick and Pete, how you doing? Gentlemen. You're sounding and looking spectacular. We are very well. Thank you for the gift of your time here because you guys have gone from, you know, part-time musos to full-time sort of uh, YouTube sensations and you're getting demands and requests and all those sorts of things. But it is a, a collaboration, if you will, or, uh, or a, uh, I guess a connective that's been going for three years since you found it in 2017. And for our listeners who don't really understand your story... Uh, Take us through this sort of concept of grabbing the very best talented individual artists in Adelaide, bringing them in together on a weekly basis, changing maybe some of the actual performers and vocalists, but always at the end producing a world-class performance. Talk us through that. It started out, um, I got back to town, I was away at at Adelaide, my hometown as well, for a long, long time. And I got a phone call from Darren asking me to come in and and play on a track for him, because through Adelaide Recording Studios, he was a producer, he's the producer here. He and was always bugging me, you know, he's me. coming into town, he wants yeah, to play bass, and that's me. he gets annoying, so eventually you just got to call the guy, otherwise, you know, the phone's just going to keep going, and, and take a look at him, you know, <sighs> you don't want to, you know, make, make, make him angry, so I'll just be nice, yeah. really. So that's he, my, my story. That's it. So <laughs> Daz called me in to do a track for him, which I did, I think it was a Shiny Stewart, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, for Shiny Stewart, and then that led to one thing, and then Daz said, you know, you're interested in doing some recording and maybe you know putting it uh, like online and i thought to myself you know it might be good I bought a camera everyone's buying cameras in studios yeah. or the smart ones hopefully and then we um we recorded the first track with um uh we did a version of uh, our version we do it like, like to qualify that we just we, we remake popular songs and just give it our own on street country club touch and our first track we did uh, little river bands uh, curiosity killed the cat with uh, andy seymour and brad palane and steve wilson and then that we just uh, we recorded it. We had a bit of fun. We put it up on Facebook, and and the um it was B Bertles from the LRB shared it, and we instantly sort of got a thousand views on it. Mm. It was just like it was our first track, and we we're just going wow, you know, like we had not many moving parts. It's just a four piece band, you know, sort of thing. It was really basic and. It was a quirky version, and f- and like we're talking about a one, two, three, four to a, a six, eight, a totally different twist. 
in the rhythm and everything. So you would think that the writer would be the first one that's going to go crazy about your, your version, but they, they supported it. And that really, that because we got encouragement from our first win, we our first thing went over the line and enough people went, you know, this is great. We were, you know, but that really got us thinking that we looked online and we, we saw all the guys, the competitors, you know, in America and the guys who were studio bands. And mm. like every business, you always have that mentality of, I can do that better, you know. And, you and know, the, difference it, with, the difference with how we approach our songs, like some of these Americans that I'm dealing with, some who have been my friends for many, many years, and I'm calling in a lot of those favours to start doing jobs in Vegas, which is something else we can talk about after. But the one thing that came back from those guys was a consistent uh, response of, yeah, you guys do other people's songs and you rearrange them and so forth. But as opposed to the other online bands, what we give our tunes, I like to say, we give it muscle. Our songs are never light on. They're not, you know, they, they, we we've like, got our own brand. Yeah, we've got our own brand, our, our own sound. And we just... Every song that we do has just got some muscle. So Staying was, consistent to that sound, <coughs> and people will expect it too. So it's it's you know find the sound or or your brand and really pump um, consistent um, muscle with yeah. with your brand. One song became two, two to four to eight, and then it got to a point that how many um, have we got now? Of more than a hundred. More than that, yeah. maybe more than one hundred and twenty. Yeah, maybe you yeah, guys are right across the numbers then. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have got a lot. I mean, I think, well, we, we brought out one per week, remember, for two years. Well, that's, so it was one per week and then you, you'd launch it straight onto Facebook? Is that how it worked? Well, we learned really quickly that Facebook doesn't like when you just post YouTube videos content. They don't like it because that's the enemy and their algorithms just look away. So the only way we could really, and get analytics from, um, from Facebook as well, was to upload the video to Facebook Facebook as well. So to Facebook and to YouTube, it always sounded a little better on YouTube. It's the same file, but Facebook just seemed to dumb it down a little bit more. So um, the sound of the video wasn't quite as good, but we got um, our, in, we always got better views on Facebook and we were always scratching our heads going, are these real? They're only three second or 10 seconds. We weren't sure. And um, I mean, it was only till lately when, you know, six weeks ago, the beginning of the pandemic and everything, when our tipping point came with the amount of views on YouTube were more than, because mm. we used to say, you know, uh, is 500 views an hour great? That was our, our line. If it's doing 500 an hour, we'd we'd, forget, we'd, you know, we'd already crossed the five million. Yeah, we'd and crossed then, the five million mark of views on Facebook. But what's happened now with, with YouTube, to correct you, Rick at 13 million. It's 17 and a half million, son. 17 and a half. 17 and a half. And the, that's such a, a huge acceleration. So, you know, I can see us hitting the 20 million mark. Next weekend. Yeah, really, really fast. And, you know, although we've just gone past 100,000 subscribers, it's momentum that's kept us here. Um, our consistency. Yeah, but that raises the. Throwing in every same time, like you mentioned, consistently bringing out. And that's the point. And that, that is the crux of everything that that I'd like to convey to everyone that's listening or watching. In any business, because I'm a businessman as much as I'm a musician, the minute you take, if you have something that's working you and you take out and it's, it's proving to work and you take out one element of that, it's never the same. Darren and I, we don't, don't make a mistake, we go at it. It's not all unicorns and rainbows, but I love that we go at it because it's passionate. And we actually give a rats, and we do give a rats, and we're not young men, we're, we're older men, and so well, speak for yourself, man. Yeah, seriously, well, me definitely. <laughs> when you're when you're working at something that like this, and a very well known musician said to me, uh, he said to me, "There's two things, these two guys, and have stayed with me." Yeah, Con, it's great that you and Darren do this, and you're getting the kudos and success, and I've seen realistically a dozen other bands uh, nationally in, in Australia. Uh, for our Australian guests, um, do this and they get to one video, they get to two videos and then it's over. The one thing that we have got is that you keep going. It does not stop and we've had time against... It still raises the bar though. You got, you know, that's a challenge. It's an ongoing challenge. So every time we bring out a video and just this morning before this call, we were just going over our final... 
um, our latest song in the mix. It's got a lot of moving parts. Um, and we're in a, a real, you know, in a warehouse now. Um, because of COVID, you know, we're, we're in a much bigger area so we can mm. spread out. And, and that's adapting. But that's... that means it's a bigger performance. It's a lot more to mix, a lot more cameras. And so, but we look at that and the bar raises again. And we're thinking, you know, where do you go from yep. that? You can't. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so it is challenging. With success comes more challenges. and But you must be up to it. Stick together. Stay consistent to your brand and you know, a, this is just business in in the end right there's a guy in out of um up on the central coast of uh, new south wales a, a nationally known bass player paul christie and he was a bass player for uh Mondo. mondos and the party boys that was his brainchild and a, a very very wise wise man he said to me con he says if you're going to go down the path of like what well, we're doing musically together and in general business but with music especially You've, and you you're, you're, and you're to tell people or you're telling kids in a school, you've got to treat yourself as a musician like the Navy SEALs do. A thousand want to go in there and do it, but only one or two come out. And if you don't have staying power in anything, and I say this in any vocation, not just music, you may as well shut shop. It's all about consistency, staying power. And with me and this guy here, it, I hate to say it, it's like a marriage. We argue, but we get over it, and we do what we've got to do because there's, there's, a, there's a, what's, what we've created is bigger than us two will ever yeah, be. That's right. Yeah, it's Absolutely. bigger than us yeah. two. And on paper, me and this guy should not work. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 on paper, it should not work. But that's but that's exactly well, you've what you got to find the balance between you know the the two different worlds, right? Yeah. You know, to make because we all live in a digital world and outside, you know, on the street, and we sort of take those lanes. And do that sort of thing, and because if you if you aren't uh, if you don't have the ability to run your business at least fifty percent online, then I don't think you're you're really competing well enough with you know your competitors will take over. Mm. So um, everyone, whether you're selling wine or music or whatever, you need to have a you know, and that percentage of online sales and uh, marketing is growing and growing and growing it's exponential yeah yeah and the thing too guys is i'm sure you're aware self-employed self-employed businessmen you're conducive to your environment the guys that darren and i get into play on it on these songs if they're not at a certain level you know it's, it's just not going to happen for them it's not we don't have the time and I don't, and the patience of the other guys they've got to come in they've got to be at a certain level they've got to be good and with with they've got to have friends too on Facebook, yeah, that helps. we initially yeah. only got them in with lots of friends going, we need lots of friends, we have to get this around, you're yeah. sharing it. It was really the way it is. You know, it no one in and the that, room, how many that was... friends on Facebook you got? A hundred. Get out of here. <laughs> and that was the secret to your success, wasn't it, really, in the sense that it wasn't just you and, and Con, Darren, just coming together downstairs in your studio. You have some of the best work. Like James Muller is like a, a world-class guitarist. Andy Seymour was a Vegas headliner in many respects, had his own TV show in the US. And, you know, when I think of the talent and the collaboration that you've got there with, you know... Danny LaPresta. Oh, Danny, like, for goodness yeah. sake, is there yeah. a bit... I mean, if I was to tell you guys, like, how many people... Because, you know, that Daz and I, we, we, we have our, our lanes, right? But uh, and the, on the music side of things, the, the, the performers that perform, you'd be surprised how many people I get calling me that love to be involved. And I'd love to say, I'd love to have you. I'd love to have you. But, A, there's just not, we don't have the, the time to be coaching someone. So everyone yeah, that yeah. does come in here is at a certain level. And that's why some people are saying, you know, the, People, why do some performers come in and out? Because we we've got our own like ultimately it's and a list of family. songs as well. We got a oh, long we got list the next of songs, 20, 30 songs already. And, and yeah, so adding yeah. a new idea, even Rick, you come up with if you came up with a great idea of me singing some track to be perfect, it has to go on the list. Yeah. And, and then sometimes it might be luck that someone's pulled out and Darren gets to do that song or or Correct. you know when you got a lot of people to organize to get in one spot and we we do our recording mainly during the day so and you know um that's really the key you know we want to make sure that we're not in, intruding in these professionals gigs and things like that uh, at the moment it's it's easier to get people because there are no gigs and some um, but you know, um, and we, even even with the song selection too, the, every song that Darren and I put out, it's not just a song at random. It's it's. I look at demographics. I look at what does that song say to people in that age group because the stuff that we and do, the message, you know, for absolutely. the time and the, the songs that we do, um, 
they, they catered to like our age group and you two as well. It was at a time when there were no kids, there were no wives, there was no mortgage. It was the best time in your life, so to speak, in that respect. You know what I mean? And they, they it's, our songs have got to take people somewhere. I remember where I was when Get Used To It came out on Countdown. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And there's a huge void that Darren and I, that Darren and I, we feel nationally that we're catering to of a time in life for a certain demographic, which is us. Yeah. Maybe we're just nice guys and what we like is what a lot of people like. You know, we had a, we, you know, there is some luck involved, but um, just, you know, we know that we're going to keep our consistent good sound. It's got to look good and sound good and everyone involved looks great, you know, it's and sounds great. It's, and I, know, I know it's cliche because it, it is completely cliche, but, you know, if you... Our, through our comment threads on YouTube, we I can't respond to them anymore. I used to make it a point. It's a full-time would, job. Yeah, that's right. I would respond to every damn comment, <laughs> and you build your fan base one by one. I, I can't do that anymore. I, mm. I, I just it's got. To I a thought point. that it'll be years till that happens. So yeah. you know, right now we're both trying to juggle the comment, you know, liking and and filtering. But um, now it's just getting towards the time when we're we're gonna need to think about getting yeah, someone to do that. It's heading down that road, but <laughs> again, us. it's just for us. I'd love to say the business businessman in us. I'd love to say, Darren and I, we sat down, we got up a whiteboard, and we did this, and, and we, we did planned, that, yeah. and at this time we're gonna do that. No. Nope. We were lucky as well because I believe you work hard it's to like make speeches your own luck. at a wedding. And nothing really happens. Yeah, to, you, you know. got, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Though. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is that with our guys, we have and getting back to that comments thread issue. The one comment that we're getting is that, um, a, what is it in the water in Adelaide? I mean, there's even talk at the moment of SBS doing a documentary on us called "What's in the Water of Adelaide." There's this YouTube. That'd be cool. We'll get on telly. Yeah, and they're talking about doing that. And like, what is it? In the water in Adelaide. But you could might even speak Macedonian. Wow. Oh, <laughs> man, would be so proud. I'd be back in the wheel. He's the but Macedonian. But the Bas- thing is, is that we have, we have, and we've used, what, more than 100 people here in Adelaide? Right? Yeah. We've had know. more than 100 local performers yes. out in the world. That's a lot. For one thing, to go 100 of our local performers have got involved with this that's a big list and with the exception of Sia who's from Adelaide in the last 10 years we are unequivocally the best thing not the best thing but the thing that's given Adelaide more international musical profile and especially right now so and we're very thankful for that and you know to America absolutely I mean the talent that you've amassed there as I said earlier Andy Seymour and you know just these are Danny Lopresto these are absolute world class they would be world class anywhere let alone in Adelaide even the bad girls the 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 combination of those three girls um Pina Delray Sarah Lloyd and uh, Nikki Huskis, you know, those the three different sounds together. It's just, it's just... But guys, what I can say that Darren and I have planned is that things like when Daz brings up the bad girls, that's a product inside a product. That will yep. also have its time where it does its own shows. I'm Andy sure that Seymour, it would. Yep. Danny, they'll, yep. they'll have their own Sarah. They'll all have their little Nikki. They'll all have their products inside HSCC where we intend on having multiple shows working yeah so we can even we'll do a performance that is just andy seymour correct and so you know it's and big it's charismatic it's it's well, it's, andy. it's vegas you know and then yeah. it's, <laughs> it's and we'll him. do a rock and roll one with denny and you know the sassy um r&b stuff yeah. um with sarah and the girls yeah, yeah. so so what I, what I'm hearing is there was no clear plan at the beginning to say here's where we're starting here's the end game it was really just we're coming with the gift of music we want to collaborate we'll see where this takes us but you were very clear on the standard that you want to set you were very clear on the quality product you wanted to to create yes there was there was an innocence about it there was you can't plan you know you see a path and you do plan but you but you um when you get your successes, you know, really grab them and, and read them. It's like reading analytics. When you see the data coming back from stuff, you really need to read it. And if you go, look, there's something really working over here. Let's make sure that we don't ignore it. Um, you know, still stay with a plan, a basic plan. But at the beginning, you can't really plan too much. You just got to start with the basics and just be true to yourself, your brand. And that's and, true. You know. That's an interesting point that, he, that Darren raises there. You know that saying, they say that if you're going to be a, a liar, 
you better have a good memory. Well, yeah. in this instance, if you're doing what we do and we just do our thing, we don't profess to be anything more than we are. We just do our thing. You can put your head on your pillow and sleep at night. And what's happening is a result of there was an innocence about it. We just wanted to have some fun. We, got, we just wanted to play good music with good players. And if anything happens, great. I actually, when we started this, I thought, if nothing else, it's a great ad for Adelaide Recording Studios. Yeah. I said, I was happy with that. We do some sessions. I get to play a bit. We have some fun. And we might get on some records. Might, you know, that's get, it. get the boys to, as session players and yeah, yeah, everyone would benefit. Yeah. But because we've, 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 we've stayed uh, and Vince Contarino was important in this, he said, you know, just keep that integrity. Just keep true to the path and ha- what, what will happen will happen. And that's, it's happened. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I've got to tell you, I've been, I've been around a bit and done stuff and I'm shocked. This, this kind of you know. the um what what you guys have created I, I, I've, we've got so many questions here I reckon you've answered nearly all of them already because um <laughs> I tell you what let you guys go and you're absolutely amazing and and in terms of your energy you're described as the group as having bounce charisma and vigor and I remember when Rick first um, shared one of your videos and I went wow this this just looks like the most amazing energy and this group of people that are in a basement and what you're the way you went about it is is just amazing. There was a sort of a rawness to it, but there was an absolute professionalism to it, and the quality was, mm. is just next level. It is outstanding. And watching going onto your website and watching some of the um, behind the scenes and how you mix and so forth, like um, Darren, you know, there's, there's you'd be absolutely at the, the top of the craft, well and truly. And that that really explains how you do get such incredible sound and put it all together. But let's talk about. I just want to go back a bit to the start and. I know uh, Hindley Street, and for those that aren't in Adelaide and aren't South Australians and maybe not even Australians that are listening to this, talk to us a bit about the Hindley Street name and, uh, and the HSCC and where, where did it all come from? I know it, I understand it's a gritty place. Can you tell us a little bit about that background? Look, Hindley Street is, is a classic street in, in Adelaide. Um, I, I myself got here in the late 80s. Um, and um, I'm from the Sunshine Coast, and I was in Brisbane for Expo 88, and that was my last gig there before I came here. Um, during the 80s, um, I mean, when I got here, um, I started playing in groups, and I was playing in Hindley Street. Um, Hindley Street had a gig in just about every bar. There was piano bars, remember them? Piano yeah. bars? <laughs> and the old smoky saxophone piano, and there was funk, and there was rock, and there was you know, duos and trios and bands and there was just, there was jazz, there was everything in Hindley Street. It was the place. Everyone who was a gigging professional muso worked in Hindley Street one night a week somewhere, right? But it, it's a shitty, it's a shitty street. Well, <laughs> you know, everyone's got that, that thing. You've got, it's the King's Cross. Correct. Of, you know, but the King's Cross is still the most lively, you know, in its day, in its peak, was the yeah. peak of town. If you're doing business, you want to be doing it in the cross. Right, so in, what kind of business? <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so, but Hindley Street now is 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 very quiet, of course. But Hindley Street um, still has a cultural centre. You know, it it nothing classy happens there. I think. There are no. some, 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 there is some classy hotels. We've got our friends at the Mayfair and that. Yeah, but back in the day, but, was, when we yeah. were there. So we, we decided that the country club was a, it was a tongue-in-cheek way of saying we're the classy part of Hindley Street, right? And there was, the guys that There was played. never, ever a, co- a country club. It was, no. you know, you can walk up and down the, down the street asking people there, but, you know, um, yeah, it's and not so, an actual And address. basically the way it started was because it's... Um, we needed a name. We yeah, needed we needed something. a name. But the name Country Club was to, was to basically, you know, infer that it's anything but a country. It's quite gritty. Well, it was like a, a gentleman's club. At first, we only had blokes, and we were thinking, gee, it's a bit of a blokes club here, you know. Mm. And, we, and that, too, maybe resounded in our heads that we should call it a club, give everyone a badge. Maybe we'll give them a bottle of wine with a badge on or something, <laughs> you know. So, so it's a members, tongue in cheek. You know, it's yeah. like saying, you know, the Alice Springs Yacht Club. You know, it's... That's you know, right. Yep. And it's yeah. stuck. So, you know, I think we've, uh, the and, the most mispronounced is Hindley. Yeah. Um, yep. well, Henley. And then Vegas. My guys in Vegas, sometimes they call it Henley. Henley I love Street. it. Henley <laughs> Street. Good. Hindley. 
very much more upmarket. And did, and then when you expanded, was it that you sort of invited Sarah and Nikki and the girls, or was it that they approached you? Because I mean, Sarah's obviously got a bit of a track record being a contestant on The Voice, and I mean, what a set of pipes! She's just absolutely out there. Did you go searching for them, or did they find you? Well. I've been in the studio game for a long time and um, Sarah, I've known Sarah since she was a kid and she came in um, with her mum and um, her mum was managing her at the time, a mummager, um, <laughs> which is a, a lot of um, a lot of mums have to do in, in the early days of that. And she was a crazy talented girl even back then. Way, you know, her voice was way above everyone else at her age. I knew that she was going to be a star. She's a good kid too, even now. She's just a a good kid. So I always knew that she was around, and um, it may have been a few years since I'd worked with her, but I knew that if I had something like this to, you know, we can make you sound like this and look like this, and you're all in the same room playing with the best guys, um, who's going to say no to that? You know, And, and now that at least we're getting some traction as well. I mean, look... We're celebrating our 100,000 subs and, and 20 million views and stuff. But, you know, this is really the only the, the beginning for us, you know. I, I hope that we're talking about, you know, a million subs and things like that. I hope that this is, you know, we've, we're planning to go to original music and things like that as well. So some of the best songwriters in, in the world, uh, Grammy-winning songwriters are throwing us songs. Yes. And, um, you know, we've, we've got the potential to, to break... And like I said, the path is still moving like it was on day one. So we're just going to go with it. You know, we're, we're inside it and it is moving itself. We're not really steering it completely. Agreed. So the people are steering it now and they've sort of taken it. So, And it's a really good feeling to have something that's, you know, that's really moving itself like that. So and we're also we're, we're bound by market forces as well. You know, we we we're and very, at times like COVID and things yeah, like that. And we're, time, we're, so. we're very uh, cognitive of what songs do well and who sings those songs, and they may have to take priority on other people. And it's why it's just been so hard to bring to bring in new new blood, so to speak. Yeah, but you've had like you know with James, he's an Aria Award winning guitarist, as I said, Andy earlier. Pino, oh. these voices, these artists, these are these aren't just Adelaide's best. These are some of the world's best, and you're giving them a platform, as you say, to sort of share their talent to the greater world now. And hasn't it been just perfect timing with lockdown and obviously so many people, Pete, getting on to YouTube to sort of get a bit of an escape, isn't it? I got to tell you, I look forward to Friday afternoon. I just know it's going to be bloody good, and I keep on fo- fo- I'm feeling like an idiot, boys. Every time I comment on one of your things, going, I thought you'd already reached a level. How dumb was I? Every week it no. gets better, and I have to keep on saying the bar's been raised no, no. again, and. <laughs> You know, it's, it's almost like mind-blowing. But what you've done during COVID-19 and that sort of ability to do the, 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 the split-screen stuff and just everybody in their own homes, adding their little bit, you obviously, Dazzler, just mixing it world-class. Con, your arranging is bloody – it probably doesn't it, – it doesn't miss the eye of anyone who's very smart and understands music, but I don't think the general people go that deep in it. They just go, this makes me feel good. This reminds me of a time when I had hair. This reminds me of a time when life was great. This reminds me of a time when I can remember my first car or my first kiss or my first anything. And it's a beautiful thing. That's correct. That part of that part of our strategy is thought out. The musicians call cons arrangements the fright, the fright of the concords. <laughs> that, that, you know, that, that, that twist comes. You're playing the song and then the twist hits. And normally the, the people are poised on the keyboard, you know, ready to just, ready to type that, mm. what'd you do to it? <laughs> Comment, right? But that's been part of our, like the same way the sound that we have out of Adelaide Rec- Recorder Studios and, and Daz doing what he does on his producer nerd uh, uh, page as well. And then with the arrangements. And but we've got, one thing that I can say, um, we've got our sound. We've got our, how we do things is ours. And like I said to you earlier in the chat, if he was to go out of the picture or I was to go out of the picture, it would never be the it same. It just yeah. won't be the same. Absolutely, yeah. no, no. You two Synergy. are the Beautiful. you two are the important It'd be pieces. Synergy, better. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, you two are yeah. the important pieces to that puzzle. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And all the feedback you get from you know fans right across the world, because you know I've seen it just in a little promo with what we were saying with our audience about we were interviewing you guys, and just because I tagged you guys in it, I was getting sort of statements coming in from Honduras, and I'd have to use Google Translate to work out what the heck they were saying. Yeah, you know, yeah you're getting yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. such. Good feedback, but you're also getting feedback from the people who wrote 
the words and the lyrics and arranged and or performed mm, yeah. the songs that you guys are actually producing. As you started off early talking about, you know, the the sort of uh, feedback you're getting from those artists. Uh, is there one particular piece of feedback or one sort of individual who's commented that's made you go, wow, we thought we were doing a great job, but that just really reconfirms that we're doing a great job? Yeah, Christopher Cross. Yeah, Christopher Cross. We did um, – um, and that, that song – was originally it was going to be someone else singing. I That's think. right. It was Dusty. So yeah. I wasn't going to mention his name. Oh, now we're going to have dude. to shame him. We've named and shamed. <laughs> Poor guy couldn't make it that yeah, morning. Yeah. So so I sang that song um, unexpectedly. I mean, I I had heard it, and never sung it in my life. It was um, uh, big sing. Yeah. So Christopher Cross is um, uh, it is a night. My mind is weak. So um, right like the wind was just. A really powerful track. I was pumped and pushing, and and it came out great. We popped it online, and he uh, put a comment on our YouTube thing saying that it was great. We did some changes, and we were always at that time people were giving us crap about changing the songs. Yeah, they were. And so um, to have him say that he liked the changes, and you know, if he was ever in Australia, he's definitely going to look us up. That's just fantastic for us. So John you know, Wake. Yeah, there's another one. The guys from Player. Uh, who else was there? There's been a few. Well, now. I mean, um, jo- um, Tom Snow, the Tom songwriter, Snow. Um, who has written for the Pointer Sisters and some, you know, the, the Footloose soundtrack, the Let's Hear It for the Boy, all those the classic '80s numbers, right in the middle of where we are. And um, when we did, he's so shy of the Pointer Sisters. Uh, he reached out to us and said that that was the the very best version since the Point wow. Sisters. Wow! And, wow! Know, wow! 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 And, and that, yeah, that was crazy good. So, Danny Mardones is people for Into yeah, the Night. That's right. Is another one. A uh, Barry Gibb was the only uh, was the only song apparently that he was shown from his manager. We did How Deep Is Your Love. Yeah. So. You know, um, I would love to do the COVID video with the guys in the middle, piping in their vocal, and for yeah, us to do a new version of. You know, that'd one of their cool. forgotten classics or something and bring it back, Swanee. you know. Yeah, so I would love to do that. And, you know, I think that's something I'm really um, reaching out for, you know. So if you were famous in the 80s, come see us. And um, could you also talk to us talk to us about, because all, all, most of the songs, or nearly all the songs are done in the basement, but it was, uh, it was late in 2018 when you took it outside and you went to the Palais Hotel. On the stuff that I've saw, like social media did go a little bit nuts on that. Talk, talk to us about taking it out of the studio to the Palais and, you know, and, and everything that went with it because that was, that was something special. It's, it's always a bit of a technical nightmare taking a recording studio outside. And, but these days, you know, we've got some good technical friends and our, our cameraman now, uh, Pat McBride uh, from Smack On uh, Content, he's a really um, cool tech guy and he came along with a box that could record 24 tracks onto a, a USB drive, 24 different microphones all at once. And um, we just plugged into the box and we trusted it. No, I, I sweated. And um, <laughs> we set up the hot. cameras and that hot. particular day at the Palais, it was so hot. We put a seven or eight foot high refrigerated, um, you know, like cooler that you would normally put a couple of them at the side of the rooms if you had a wedding reception. It's just to cool the whole room out. We had one right in front of Sarah blowing cool air right on top of her and that's how come her hair's billowing like an angel. And <laughs> that was a great look too. It was, look. you know, yeah, his, his, his thongs were, you know, part of it. But, man, that whole day was so, so hot and with the window behind us, we were all baking in there and doing take after take. We did two songs there. We did Jesus is Just All Right with me with Danny Lopresto as well. But look, it is a challenge taking our stuff out. But now we, we can really take it anywhere. So we're even thinking that we could probably go up on um, to a place. As long as we had internet access, um, we could probably even live stream from the top of a hill with a, with a generator because we don't have a PA. We don't set up great big speaker boxes and stacks. Yeah. When the singer sings... They're the only people who hear them through their in-ear monitors. So it doesn't take a lot of electricity when you don't have all those amplifiers. So we really don't draw a lot. I really encourage um, our listeners and viewers to to jump on the website and watch that, how you explain that and how the singer can – what are the, the earphones, particular earphones the called? IEM, so in-ear monitors. In-ear but, monitors you know, they've been yeah. using them for years. I was watching an old George Michael concert 
and he was and he used to use them as well and this is way 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 back mtv unplugged yeah That's it's right, crazy yeah. and they were using in-ears back then so um in-ears mean there's no fallback it means no feedback the microphone doesn't go Eat. so if there's no fallback blaring loud vocals then the mic won't feedback singer hears it perfect they don't push themselves their voice lasts longer they sing better it's it's a win-win for everyone yeah especially yeah. the audience and for a guy who's recording, I just want to hear what the microphone hears. Good, perfect. And talk us through Thibbeton Theatre. That was obviously a very uh, significant uh, time in your development as a as a collaborative group. And uh, to sell out the Thebby, that was amazing. I remember flying in. My my business manager bought the tickets. I flew in. I went to a hotel. I dumped my bag, and I got there just in time. And to watch Andy perform live and Danny to perform live, and you 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 and Nikki uh, Dazzler doing that amazing duet. You know, like that was. I just remember saying to myself, I don't know what the ticket cost because uh, you know I didn't buy it, but I would have paid ten times the amount for that experience. That was a beautiful theatre for. for for our Melbourne viewers and listeners, it's a bit like the Palais Theatre in St Kilda. It's a, it's a very – well, you tell the story about how important that particular theatre is to performers in Adelaide. It was a big benchmark too because we, we, we were a Facebook band. You know, we weren't on the radio. We had no following outside of our Facebook page. And to sell out of that room is, you know, it's We all, worked out. Oh, every off. one of those tickets we earned, I tell you, we worked and worked and worked and we – we pushed and we, the amount of videos around that time and, and our, you know, we were really, really into it. I mean, we didn't spend um, um, a lot of money on advertising. We tried a bit of radio. That probably didn't work as much no. as what we did online um, through also Facebook. Also, too, you know, it's like it wasn't, it wasn't a cheap – we didn't know what was going to happen, guys, when we, when we, did, when we launched the tickets. We, we, Daz and I, we big just – Big theatres cost know. a lot of money to play. It, it, you you can't – it's point. not free to play in a theatre and you just don't give a, mm. you know, some of the ticket stuff to, to the guys That's in right. the thing. You've got to pay – you've got a massive PA and light rig and people and staff. 15, and 20 you know, people on the there's stage. There's a lot – yeah, a lot of, lot of musicians. We, we had, had two drummers. Three. Two drum – well, three on two the drum night. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll never yeah. do that again. Oh, <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> but he, um, like I said, our break-even point wasn't, you know, we were thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of break-even before we even made a dollar. That's, That's a huge risk, okay, and man. for a Facebook band. So, but we had the collective. We had so many people in the band, and they all had their own fans, and so we knew that we were we had them on our side as well. They were going to play in a big room, a really nice theater, and that in, in itself is going to like when you do a gig. Um, and you have special players, you think that they're going to bring someone along, and they don't always do no, that. But when know. you play on a stage like this, every one of those people wanted all of their friends to come and see them play on that stage. And that really did give us a bit more confidence in we're going to have a bottom line of people because if everyone got their fans involved and went to, all to their pages and went crazy on it, um, then we would at least have a bottom line. But we were like, to, to get Rick, a lot more. Rick and Pete, like, I'm not going to say, you know, uh, it wasn't a kick, you know, half an hour before, you know, the doors were opening and it was a cold night, it was July of last year. There was, a, you know, I went across the road to the service station there and there was a lineup of people, you know, ready to get in because it was a, it wasn't, they weren't, it wasn't allocated seats. So you got, you ever got to the front, got to the front. And I thought to myself, I had my own little private moment. I thought, Daz, you know, in my head, I'm going, Daz, look. Yeah. He wasn't with me. I was by myself. I think in my head. Because he's crazy like that. Yeah. Talks to himself all the time. But I'm thinking myself, Dad. <laughs> I'm shaking my head, thinking, look at what, look at what's, what, what's come out of what we started to this. And then make no mistake, that was a Saturday night, as you remember. On the Monday morning, the phone was ringing. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. of a sudden, there was these promoters going, "How did you go from not doing clubs? You went straight to theatres." Yeah. You know, and it was when the phone started ringing, and then that was the precursor. I only found out recently with the dealings I'm doing overseas uh, in, in Vegas and in other parts of America, they've been watching our socials for a year now. Yeah, wow. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. And now they've come and said to me, oh, Con, you know, or Constantine, as they call me, we've, you've been, we've been watching your socials, and that's where I've, uh, it's been a, it's a couple of casinos that are now saying, all right, you know, they want to give us a letter of intent when this is all over to get us over there. And if I had my way... I'd be over there doing five nights a week for the next five years because 
the, it's what we do. Do you know? At the end of the day, it's what we do. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's people are watching. It's a very cool job. Yeah. People are watching, and it's and it is work, me. but it is a cool job. Yeah. Yeah. And in that queue, I've got to say, to get in, Pete, and that was very true, i got to tell you, there was not an empty seat, and most people weren't sitting down for most of the night, let's be honest, but um, I remember thinking at the time, I'm thinking, if you ever need a verification of just the power of an idea and just the, to get out there and give of yourself and just see where it takes you, that was it that night. It was it was July, I remember it was bloody cold, but uh, oh, yeah. by the time we got to the theatre, it was really warm, because it, it was just standing room only, really, and I, I got there fairly late, so um, you know, I, I, I didn't get up the front by any stretch of the imagination, but it didn't matter, because the sound was great. The acts kept on coming. You had it really well done. It was a, an amazing night. And then that's obviously giving you the impetus for the international sort of uh, uh, plug that you've just talked about there with people coming in. But, Pete, I, I think I said to you at the time, I said, mate, I don't know where these guys are going, but I want to buckle up with them because I reckon they're going to go to the outer stratosphere. It's unbelievable. What, what, I, what I love about Con and Darren is not only are they giving such joy and, I mean, to see, see a bunch of um, guys and gals jamming in a basement with the most amazing sound, it's just bringing back those memories and makes the hairs on the neck sort of stand up. But it's well, also... the hairs on the back of my neck because I've got no hairs on the top. But, yeah, I'm with you. I'm digging. <laughs> so so it's, the, it's the joy to the listeners like you and I and, yeah. and, and those in the audience. But, but also just to hear how many performers... Um, that you get involved, the musicians that you are almost their saviour, you are giving them a voice as well. So you're doing so much for so many and it's just multiplying. The multiplying effect is, is incredible. Yeah, and the platform that these artists that may not have really, you know, someone like Cat, who's, you know, Dazzle, I've been seeing a lot of Cat stuff when she just goes into shopping centres and starts playing and goes live on Facebook and then you hear her renditions of some of your songs and you just go... Man, oh man, how are you just playing a bloody shopping mall somewhere with yourself and uh, your little handy cam or you're flipping your own iPhone when you've got such a world-class voice? And you guys are also giving the platform for these particular artists to have a much more, if you will, a, a wider audience to play to. And that was my, my next question because, Con, I think you summed it up beautifully, the, the thrill beforehand to see the lines of people wanting to come to realise that, you know, it's not a uh, we've made it moment, but it's really a moment of reinforcement of what we're doing is great. Now knowing that there's so much of this, what you're doing virtually, but there is the possibility of having a residency in the, let's be honest, it's probably the entertainment capital of the free world. It I mean, is. You know, Pete it and I absolutely have is. been to Vegas multiple times. We still remember going in 2007 and watching Danny Gans live at the uh, Mirage and he had his big sort of marquee out the front they could do a thousand voices and imitate and impersonate and sing and dance and it was unbelievable but any night of the week we went and saw Beatle Love I think oh we went and saw you know a hundred dollars a night for a show we'd just go see anything to have that opportunity okay that's in front of us and that yet Darren as you know uh, you're getting as much if not uh, significant traction in the virtual world where do you see, I guess it'll be a bit of both going forward, but as artists, where do you see the real re re reward for effort? Do you feel it in a live audience where you give back and, get, sorry, when you give of yourself and you get back from the audience in real-time feedback? Or is it scrolling through, as you say, having someone full-time now, having to go through the uh, the comments and sort of give feedback? Where do you see it as artists to get the reinforcement that you actually are creating a content that has value? It's always been a... Um I know the road's moving and I and the times where we don't have any gigs right now but um it's always been our intent to to tour with a band so the we are a band and bands belong on the stage right. you know you get big you're in concert you're on tour it's really um you've got to be out there with the people I think in the end that's really where it is as far as the studio stuff goes we we still um, have our own rules and we don't um, we want it to happen as a take in the take we don't want to um, we're not uh, we don't overdub and mime so it's a big pressure for our singers and our players to to keep it up there and the other guys lift you to where you you know the team lifts you but we always want to show our integrity online as well so if you're watching, you, you're watching what's happening, what happened, you know. It is a live take, recorded. I mix it the best that I possibly can, and um, that really um, is our main rule. When we get on stage, you only have one chance. In the studio, we have multiples, but you only have one chance of three minutes to get every part of the song and every lyric right, every single thing, every fright, frightful chord that Connor's inserted. And, some, you know, you've... But, 
you know, it's, live is going to be the same sort of challenges. We'll always be um, in, we'll always have integrity, I think, online with what we do because of our rules. But ultimately, you're going to see us on a stage in concert. You know, that's that's really where we want to be. And also, too, that's that's the one place you can physically monetize it nightly. At the end of the yeah. day, it's, it's it's great that what we do, but we didn't we didn't we're not making money now, and which we really want to talk about like real money. Yeah, you know, yep. but that's how we'll be able to monetize it. And like any good business, we'll be reinvesting some of that money back into the product, to the studio, to Daz's equipment, to just keep on delivering good product. I think as um as we start to to wind up now, and uh, we really appreciate your time, understand you absolute. know sort of how busy you are, and to, to talk to two absolute men like yourself who are just absolutely making it happen. And this COVID nineteen, well, it's almost like you saw it happening you know three years ago because the way you developed your business and what you were able to create in that time, well and truly gave you the jump. But it wasn't just any business; it was something that um you you loved and you were passionate about, and that passion just shows through in everything you do, every song, every word, every lyric, um, every performer. A, a, a big shout out! I got to say, I really did love "Best of My Love." Pina, Nikki, and Leslie were just um. You know, no, no offense, guys, but they they really did steal the show uh, on that one. That was something in, incredibly special. But um, but I just wanted to, again, yeah, just just to really say thank you so much for your time. You're so inspirational in what you've done and what you continue to do, and it's a classic example of not what letting perfect get in the way of better and just taking an idea, taking your love, taking your passion, putting it together and going, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just see where this takes us. And it's taken you somewhere far and beyond, I imagine, what you, what you could have possibly imagined and it's continuing to do so. And uh, you've got two massive fans here. Well, Rick was your first fan and, uh, <laughs> and I certainly tagged on as well because um, – just to, um, you're right, the, the smile that you bring to our faces and, and, and we're constantly sharing, you know, songs, watch this one, watch this one, watch this one, and we just we just eagerly await the next one and then the next one and then the next one. It is, and it's sort of, I think really where you're at now, boys, is you're a classic example of giving starts the receiving process because you've given so much of yourself and freely you deserve every monetary reward you get going forward. And I know you didn't do it for the money. You still take the money, though, of course, if it's ever on offer, I get that. But you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for the opportunity to create something that – has your DNA all over it and I think if I heard anything at the start whilst there was no flow chart with a whiteboard here's where we are here's where we want to get to here's how we're going to do it I don't think there was any of that there was always just a clear here's why we're going to do what we do here's and we'll why. set our mm. standards and our standards will be immovable the That's market correct. may change the opportunities may change but the one thing that will never change is our world class level of artist world class level of production world class level of arranging con world class level of mixing Dazzler and, and, and probably the two things that, that you two don't get enough credit for i think and i've said this to you privately darren i you know i i, I think you should sing more I, I really do i know your strength is you know your um, sort of ability to mix and you, you know your, your piano and keyboard playing is outstanding but for christopher cross to say that was an amazing rendition and i could imagine how dusty would have done it too because he's just bloody amazing too but um you know the fact that you were able to do that is incredible and con your arranging is something that i've i've shared that with some pretty high level uh musos as you know brother and they've all looked at me and gone this cat knows more about sort of music than what his bass playing tells you his bass playing is good enough that was from one of the best bass players in the world who you know and and uh you know for him to sort of give that feedback was uh, pretty pretty direct to me but i've got no doubts pete that if any of our listeners and watchers uh, are, are unknown to the hscc you need to all the all the links will be available at the bottom of this you you are crazy if you don't click onto the YouTube channel and just go through an absolute catalog of classic songs with so many world-class artists arranged pu- beautifully but you can hear in the in the intent of both Darren and Con the standards are always going to be set where just a little bit higher to make sure that they're constantly growing and improving and they've really given a gift I think specifically in these times Pete where we can't just escape this thing called COVID-19 but just when you listen to three minutes of that Boy, it takes you back. It does me anyway. So, so that's the that's the real message I take. Con Darren, any uh, any last minute uh, words for our uh, for our listeners and viewers? Uh, from my perspective, I just want to say thank you, thank you to you both because it's nice to be acknowledged. But also, Darren and I, we're, like I said earlier, we're very cognitive of the fact that we we do our thing, but we've got great people with us, our our players and our singers. We've got great people. This has been. Um very therapeutic 
um, guys, because you know we're, Connor and I haven't spent um, one-on-one time together much because we're unless we're working recording and um, you know have some the occasional phone chats and stuff. But to sit down and let all this out, yeah, good, um, is is probably good and um, it is good to um, you know to talk about it. And it's it's a crazy time now, and people are um, trying to find some positives in their business and things like that. And I think that's why they're listening. And um, just we're still going to be around. Um, what when this is over, we're just going to keep plowing through and doing what we do, and um, hopefully just bringing positive stuff to the world is going to be um, our success. But you know, as long as people love it, we'll keep doing it. Well, there's no doubt that as long as your dreams and aspirations keep on outweighing the absolute memories you've already created, your future is absolutely rest assured under control. You package a gift beautifully every Friday afternoon I can't wait to unwrap it there was a stage there where YouTube was bringing it out before Facebook and once I realised that I jumped on the YouTube first and foremost so I think we've got that now aligned gentlemen thank goodness because it's it, I'm feeling time, like I almost it. missed out on something I'm thinking how are these people unwra- it was like a kid unwrapping a Christmas present on Boxing Day I'm thinking what the hell have I missed out you're on lining here? up for your iPhone a day I, later mate I did not like it at all and then I, I gave the boys a bit of feedback and said can we just get this back to how I used to love it and know it and, you know just Facebook it this all- week's release I'm, re- I'm really I'm really yeah. pumped about this, yeah, this, this is, week. This is, a, this is a very Don't, special do, one. Do you want to so, tease it or do you want to leave it um, very and comfortable? And it's the bad girls too. So, Peter, mm. you're going to get your wish, mate, you know. So, the bad girls. <laughs> um, <laughs> the bad girls oh. I love yeah, it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so the classic track. And it really says everything, you know, that we need Correct. to say right now. Good. So they've done a, It's good. I'm really. I'm, I'm not really going to say happy. they've dedicated it to Rick and I. But, but you know, we'll take look, it. We'll, We're going to take yeah, it as a dedication. You can take that if you like. And Rick can put thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you in a comment when it pops out. <laughs> well, you, you will guarantee that for sure. Folks, this has been an absolute gift for Pete and I to collaborate with two passionate individuals that have started something that, you know, where they've started is certainly not where they ever thought it was going to get to right now. But what I now know is where we are right here, right now, when we're having this conversation again in uh, a few short months' time, potentially, uh, definitely, I, I would suspect, Pete, we're going to have a million subscribers and we're going to have probably close to 100 million views views of their their work be because awesome. it is just world class and in these day and ages where people are restricted in what they can do told where they can and can't go what they can believe and not believe in the beautiful thing is for three minutes every friday afternoon you get a chance to just escape the reality of the challenge of today go back in time but always you know you're being taken there with quality with very high standards with care with love ultimately though with great passion con darren on behalf of all of your fans can i just say this is a great opportunity for us to say thank you the thank two you. most underused words in the english language but without your sort of vision and and obviously you guys you know having that bold faith step to have a crack at it we wouldn't be here right Right now having this great catalogue that anyone can go back to at any time they like if they're feeling down you just go straight to the hscc youtube channel pick any one of the catalogue that is there click play sit back and be taken back to a time when we all had a little bit more faith in in humanity and a little bit more uh focus on the opportunities moving forward not the difficulties and the challenges that we're seeing around the world at the moment we cannot wait to be front row pete and i at your next gig and if that's in vegas we're happy to sort of even uh, look okay we'll do it <laughs> okay well look we, we, we could be convinced to do it. And um, I'm not saying it has to be business class return airfares, Pete, but uh, I think we'll be there making sure we're doing it. Uh, folks, if you have not do yet. Do you know how to mic or, you know how to roll a mic lead? You know? Might, you know, if you can be I, useful, we can always, oh, you know. Oh. That is, in, in my sleep. That is his wheelhouse dazzler. He wraps these cords up better than anyone I know. And he knows not to do it in the way that most people do it because he doesn't want to snap any of the <laughs> optical fibres inside, I think he calls it. I don't know That's what that great. means. I'm more high touch than high tech, mate. I don't need you to know that. But uh, Pete's the one who's all over that. But we're happy to be roadies. I could be security. I look threatening. Um, you can you I can could, be on the door. I could you be can, on the door. You know? I, I reckon I've got that under control, but uh, <laughs> not that threatening. If I ever wanted to eyeball Condo, I have to stand on my wallet, Dazzler. So that might be the way we have to do that. <laughs> Who knows? But in all seriousness, folks, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe. If you haven't joined this community that is the HSCC, you are just doing yourself an injustice. If you do like it, make sure you share it. Give the boys a shout out. It's certainly something that we're very grateful for. They don't do this at all. And we're very fortunate to have this opportunity to share uh, not just a great chat with some artists, but you can hear the business mind behind, you know, Con. You can hear the absolute quality to detail with, uh, with Darren. And you can hear, most importantly, their sense of community, wanting to bring their players, their team with them. And everyone who's listening and watching this at the moment, 
you are all somebody who understands that success is not a solo performance. We all need other people playing with us and these guys do it on a weekly basis. You can do it on a daily basis. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. On behalf of Peter Kagos, my good friend, this is Rick Rushton here saying this is one for the books for us too. Uh, we'll see you next time on Voices of Value, but please make sure you acknowledge these wonderful gentlemen here. Thank you, boys. We appreciate boys. the opportunity. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Con. Thanks, Thanks Darren. Darren. all your listeners. We trust you enjoyed listening to Voices of Value, a shared conversation between Rick Rushton, Peter Kakos, and their valued guests. Their views are not necessarily those of the wider world, but they should be. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or your preferred podcast source. And we love to hear both your feedback and ratings on the content we provide. Additional information can be sourced through our website, voicesofvaluepodcast.com. Join the conversation again next week when Peter and Rick continue the search for truth, justice, and the value-added way.